we're going to try another theist named John. I have a feeling it's going to go better. I feel like it couldn't go worse, but who knows? John in New York uh, wants to speak about God in a way that is unique. John, you are on the line with Jimmy and Matt. Yes. Hello. Can you do that? Can I start off with this here? Uh, Excuse me. Can I start off with this here? I just, this is just something that uh, I call them Babylonian witch doctors. Okay, I don't care title use, priest, parson, whatever. But my phone apparently is running out of battery power. I've been holding on for a while. Okay, can you go? So anyway, can you go sit somewhere and plug me? in? Excuse me. Can you go sit somewhere and plug it in? Uh, if I hung it up to charge, it's on a regular phone. It's not on. Oh, I see. I mean, I do have these on here, but there's seems. Let's to just be get to lag. the Babylonian witch doctor. Let's just get to yeah. the point. Wait, what are you talking about? Babylonian witch doctors? What? Well, I, that's what I call them, Babylonian witch doctors. You know, uh, I'll give you an example. I was. As an infant. John, turn off the show in the background. Are you kidding me? Excuse me? You have the show on in the background. Turn it off. Yes, I do. Turn Shut it up. off. What are you doing, man? Well, I don't know. I'm just, this is the first time I've ever done this anyway. All right. Let me explain to you there. Well, my parents took me as an infant, so I called the witch doctor. He threw some water on me, mumbled jumbled a few words, and voila. As an instant Christian, just add water. Okay. So you're basically well, saying that. With... And one of the other things is that uh, I ran into Matt probably about four or five years ago on the YouTube because that's I, mostly it's for music and stuff. But on the sidebar, he always got all these things, and I saw this about an atheist, so, so let me listen to So I listened to Matt and s- things like that there, and mm-hmm. I would stand with Matt shoulder to shoulder with these other Christians. Okay, fine. What John, they, are you a theist or an atheist? I'm a, I consider myself a theist because okay. of what happened to Sure. Me. Did you call in with a point? Because we've gone so many places. This is the most confusing call. I'm trying to not get mad because I've been mad at other stuff. What is the point you called in to make? Well, the thing is what I'm calling about is that about, you know, my belief in God. Yeah, why I believe in Great. stuff like this here. Great. Tell yeah, us why I, you I believe in God. Good. Just why you believe in God. No no stories. Why do you believe in God? What happened to me? I was a young man in the Marine Corps. But this is in 72. I'm in my 70s. I wasn't no kind of religious person. I was just a young man, minding my own business. It was on a Saturday in the Marine Corps in Camp Lejeune. The place was emptied. I was embarrassed myself, just reading a book. All of a sudden, this man appeared in front of me. He said, God wants you to stop what you're doing and seek and find him. And he just disappeared again. Okay, so I said, what was this? How do you find God? I knew nothing about God. I, like I said, I was a young man. I didn't care. I was no religious person at all. But when that happened to me, the next day around, I bought a, a Bible, which I still own. I had the gene called, I don't, never read scriptures. I didn't care about scripture. didn't care about God. I said, young man. John, let's let's start investigating some of this. First of all, when you say a man appeared in front of you, are you trying to say a ghost or an angel, or are you trying to say a human well, I person? I don't know what to call it. I'll call it an angel now. Okay. But when it happened to me, I had no idea what okay. it was. And why did you buy a Bible? You tell me. No, you I tell me. You like, chose. Hey, you I had no, you I tell me said, why you just, bought a Bible. You said somebody came. They didn't say buy a Bible. They said find God. <laughs> And you went and yep. you were at Camp Lejeune, which yep. is probably the answer, and you went and bought a Bible. Why That's didn't, right. you, Next day on Sunday, why didn't no you buy a Quran? I had no idea why I bought it, but I don't Why didn't it. you buy a Quran? I have no idea. You tell me. I'm just telling you what, what happened. <laughs> yeah. This is here. what happened to me. I went on and bought it, and I started reading it. Okay. And all of a sudden, 
know, how, how big is it? How, how many pages are in the scriptures and this and that? None of that matters. Okay. Your story so, is, I was at Camp Lejeune, and I yep. had a vision of an apparition. Yeah. So we, hang on, hang on, John, John, Stop hang on. Stop saying anything. Let him get all this and say yes at the end. You're saying you okay. saw the apparition of someone that you recognized as a man who told you to find God. We're now in a position where we can't exi we can't uh, investigate that. We can't find out whether or not you actually spoke to a real person or an angel. We can't. That's right. I have no information about whether or not you were intoxicated, you were medicated, you oh. were dehydrated. I have no information about any of that. But well, from your point of view, hang the fuck on, man. From your point okay. of view, you're saying you saw an apparition of a man who said you to told you to find God. Correct? Yes? Yeah. So you still haven't told me why you then determined, even if I say, fine, you saw an angel or you saw an apparition and they told you to find God. Why then did you go and get a Bible? And why did you determine that some form of Christianity, apparently, was the God you were supposed to find? You, you tell me. I have no, no idea you I, tell me. It, it was you. You made the I'm decision. Sorry. You. OK, I'm going to make it as simple as possible, John. The next morning you woke up and decided to go buy a book. Right. You decided to go to a bookstore. Right. No. Went yeah. to the PX. OK. What made you decide? Why did you buy a book? In, uh, if the being, if the entity said, find God, why did you buy any book? Why was going to buy a book your determined path for finding God? Here's, here's, here's to, like answer said, the recording. fucking question. You won't let me, you won't let me answer. I'm trying to explain. You're full of you shit. No you're full of shit, John. John, that. you're full of Just shit. It, when you say. Today. John, when you say we won't let you answer, and Jimmy and I have asked you the same fucking question four or five times, you are a liar. He just said you there's no reason or not, rhyme. I don't John, know are, why not, are you John, John, listen to me. You know what? Look, you, all, some, you know John, shut up and listen my... to me. Uh, some being, shut the fuck up and listen. I am listening. Some being, let me sing up. I shut him. your fucking pie hole. I'm going to mute you I and listen. Some being or some impression or some thing told you to go find God. At that point, you decided that in order to find God, you needed to buy a book. I don't understand why you thought that. And then you decided that the book you should buy is the Bible. I don't understand why you thought that. So the question is, when this apparition told you to go find God, why did you then go try to buy a book? reason why <clears throat> the reason why I did that because like I said the scriptures are supposed to be the word of God and I went out and I bought it and I started reading it and I come across Jeremiah 29 even when I look at it when I started reading that and it says that when you seek and find God with all your heart you'll be found by him and he had these good thoughts towards you. Now, why would I even find that passage with a book that thick? I had no idea why it died either. I don't think John is equipped to have the conversation. But at this point, we're, we might be an asshole if we keep taking the call. John. Oh, bro. The reason oh, you we think I'm an asshole? John. I just said the no! opposite. No! Jimmy just said that we might be the asshole. If you would stop fucking talking and listen, you might understand okay. something. I understand what you're saying, but you won't listen to me. Please. You're, you're full I'm of like shit, 17. John. I just sat here and listened yeah, to you give your explanation. And now I'm responding and you are talking over me again. Talk over me one more fucking time, I dare you. Now listen, I asked the question about why you went to the book and you've now answered it because you were taught somewhere before you had this vision that 
the Bible counts as scriptures, and scriptures are supposed to be the Word of God, which means you, despite being a non-believer who looked at Christianity as witch doctor sprinkling water you, had already been infected with the idea that the Bible is the mm -hmm. Word of God. This is called a really. bias. You're um, full of shit, John, and you just interrupted me. Goodbye. Fuck off. Yeah, there's that. He's not right. equipped. He's not equipped to to handle. You you this. are not ready. The the undeniable fact, despite the fact that you're trying to deny it, is that you grew up in a culture surrounded by other people who not only had them sprinkle water on you, but talked about the Bible as the Word of God. This creates a bias in your head, even when you're not a believer. You were surrounded by Christians, which is why your default action when you had an, a vision was to go to Christian scriptures. That's why you didn't buy a Quran, because you weren't raised in a culture where the Quran was the Word of God. That's why you didn't buy a Bhagavad Gita. That's why you didn't buy the scriptures of any other religion. You bought the scriptures of this one. The reason you can find a passage, in this case in Jeremiah, that speaks to you is because you can open the Bible virtually anywhere and find something that you can make seem important. Yep. That's the way this works. You didn't have an actual vision and then find the truth, because if you had an actual vision and find the truth, instead of this angel or whatever you want to call it, saying, go find God, this angel would have provided you with clear communication, information saying, go and buy a, a new international version of the Bible and study it. And in particular, start with this passage in Jeremiah. That's the sort of message that comes from a God that actually wants you. Do you think that God is some kind of fucking prankster where he's going to sit... Let me send forward. I have a very important message for you, Jimmy. Um, yeah. I have a very important message for you. Your entire future depends on it. It's, it's important. I need to find a way to give this important message to Jimmy. And the important message is, Jimmy, you need to give me $25,000 right now. But instead of conveying that message, I'm going to send it something else. I'm going to send a voicemail to Jimmy that's going to be automatically deleted. And the voicemail is going to say... Look for money. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something. So like, give the money up. Look, look for money. The very notion that there is a God that works that way is beyond stupid. Yeah. The very notion that the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise creator and governor and sustainer of the universe has an important message for you is already dubious at best. But that when he conveys it, instead of conveying it in a clear way where you could understand it, he sends down an unknown messenger who says, find God. That's stupid. When we ask questions to try to get to what you believe and why, it's because we've both done this for ages and we know what questions to ask. And when you interrupt those questions, avoid those questions, and then keep saying, you won't let me finish, you won't let me finish, you won't let me finish, you won't let me finish. You're right. I'm not going to let you finish your distraction. I want you to finish answering the question because our question is a path to clarity either for us to understand what you're saying better or for you to understand how stupid it is. Now, I've said stupid about 18 times. I yeah. did that on purpose. Do I think John is stupid? No. Do I think what John believes is stupid? Yes. Do I think the pathway that John got to something is stupid? Yes. We are all stupid in some way about something at some time. If you are engaged in an irrational exercise and you haven't even bothered to think about the consequences of it, oh, let me tell you, I had this amazing experience. God sent down a messenger. How do you know that? Well, hang on, let me finish. God sent, I, I had an experience and they told me to find God. Okay, 
what was his experience? Well, it was this, it was a vision of this. Okay, why would God do that? Why doesn't God just talk to you? Why doesn't God just talk to me? Why doesn't God just talk to all of us? If he is all powerful, all wise, all knowing, it would be trivially easy for God to show up right now on this show, not even as a caller. God could just superimpose his voice in a way that Jimmy couldn't stop him. God could make sure that even if Jimmy pulled the internet uh, connection, the, the, the wired connection directly out of his machine, that it would keep broadcasting. He could take over this. Hell, Anonymous could do what I'm describing, to basically take over the broadcast and make it look like they were God taking over the broadcast. But God could absolutely do that and then provide a convincing and compelling statement to everyone watching, the thousands that are watching here today live and the hundreds of thousands that will watch this over, you know, however many months. Yeah. Why doesn't God ever do that? Why is it that God gives a vague message to people who are demonstrably ill-equipped at reasoning? Yes. Not stupid, just not trained in critical thinking, in skepticism, why is it, it's kind of like saying, why do the UFOs keep showing up out in the middle of nowhere and bringing up a cow and some drunk hillbilly? Yeah. Instead of picking up Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why, why, haven't, why haven't these aliens picked up Neil deGrasse Tyson or anybody in that ballpark? Instead, they're gonna have an encounter at a trailer park during a 4th of July festival, and there's gonna be a dead cow somewhere. And God, instead of actually engaging with human beings who he's supposed to love, instead helps somebody find their car keys, doesn't help somebody with their cancer, helps someone find a restaurant that they and their spouse can both agree on, doesn't help a starving ch child, helps someone understand what job they think that God wants them to do, does not provide a job or information about a job to someone who is desperately praying and trying to feed their family. When you look at the big picture, every single one of you who believes in a God is a monumentally arrogant piece of shit ignoring all of the other things in reality. And you know what? So am I. The fact that I'm spending time doing this, the fact that I played a video game this morning instead of helping somebody out, that means I was being a piece of shit for a little while. But it may be necessary to do things like that to make sure you're in the position to help people when you can. And the biggest difference that I can say between me and every one of your versions of God is that I've actually done one good thing in my life. Yeah. Show me that God's ever done one good thing and I won't think that I'm better than your imaginary friend. But until your imaginary friend learns to communicate effectively, all he's doing is making you look foolish. I also like to discourage people in chat uh, from infantilizing people for being old. In fact, the reason why I said I don't think he is equipped doesn't have to do with his age. It could be that, but I don't have the criteria by which to diagnose. Uh, I suspect based on the sort of reasoning he was using, had we talked to him, 20 years ago, uh, he would have been using very, very similar reasoning, if not the exact same. So, uh, yeah, yeah. there's just people complaining about, come on, go easy. He's in his 70s. No. Anyway. Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and I only became a woodworker for the puns. That's not important. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so on our Patreon or as a channel member, and you can actually support specific shows and specific hosts in special tiers on those. Check those options out. Also, you can leave a super thanks and get a little highlighted deal, but if all else fails, you can always like, you can subscribe, and leave a comment. Now, here are some suggestions because I don't care about the algorithm. I am the algorithm. Bye.